we are ready for the next step. In, in a manner of speaking, we've conquered the array list, right? We know how to add stuff to it. We know how to delete stuff. We can loop through it and access all the elements. We can manage the size, right? We now have this resizable collection of particles. We can add, subtract, do whatever we want. This is a great step, but we have another big step forward we need to take. And let's think about why, let's, let's just, let's think about why we need this next step that I guess I haven't mentioned yet what it is yet. So take a look at this example here. So here's a processing sketch running. Notice there is nothing in the window, but I can grab the mouse, wrong mouse, I can grab this mouse, and I can start clicking. And everywhere I click, I'm adding a particle system, right? A particle system is a collection of particles. This processing sketch is a collection of particle systems. I could have like more than one processing sketch, which are a collection of processing sketches, which are collections of systems, which are collections of particles, right? We could, we could do this forever, and I think I said this in the last video. Apparently, I have some weird obsession with systems of systems of systems. But what's the point here? The point is that in order to do this, we need to take this idea of a particle system and encapsulate it into a class. We need the particle system class, right? We want, we have a very simple goal here, which is to have a sketch <laughs> that looks like this one. I mean, look at that code. It's so like, there's just nothing there. It, it's just one particle system. We don't even refer to an individual particle anywhere here. It's just make a particle system, add particles, run it, right? This is what, I mean, our whole life here is just about I mean, look at the indentation, it's just a few lines. It's so nice and compact and cute little code, right? This is where we're going. So how do we get to this point? How do we make this program work? This is, I, I expect this hopefully won't even take us that long. This is gonna be, I'm, I'm rooting for the record of the shortest video yet, because apparently I take way too long and some of these are kind of slow. Okay, so um, let's think about that. Okay, so what do we know that we have? We know that we have a main program, right? The main program is gonna have setup and draw in it. And if we look at where we left off in that example we had that we built in the last video, what was in setup and draw? All this stuff about the array list, all that kind of stuff, right? So that's not what we don't want that anymore. Here's setup and draw. This is where we want to have just our reference to the particle system. Okay. So we know we have a class called particle, right? The class called particle is the individual object. Location, velocity, acceleration, update, display, lifespan, all that stuff about an individual particle. So, you know, all the vectors, et cetera, et cetera. That's our individual ob uh, object. The thing that we're missing that we haven't done yet in these examples is create the particle system class. I'm going to call it particle system. What is in the particle system class? The main piece of data in the particle system class is the array list. Call it A for simplicity on the board, right? This is the innovation here. We have a class that describes a singular entity, then we have a class that describes a list of those singular entities. This is not um, <laughs> rocket science, although we could do a, a rocket science simulation with this, with the particle system being the smoke that comes out of the rocket. This is rocket science. Anyway, but what I mean, this, this hopefully is fairly intuitive and somewhat simple, and that's kind of my goal for it here. The thing about it is it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's important to practice this. I don't know, hopefully we're doing something useful here, right? So but this is what we've got. So let's think about what kind of methods might we need in the particle system, and you have to ask the question. Is this a method that deals with an individual particle or a method that deals with the system as a whole? And we can think about what that might be. What's interesting about it is we might write a method in here called display. Right? We want the system as a whole to display the particles. But there's a method called display in particle which actually draws the ellipse or the image or whatever it is we're drawing. So what we want to do in the particle systems display method is loop through all the particles, right? So essentially, I kind of went off on it. This is poorly organized. I would, if, I, if I start over, I would do it better, but it's too late now. Um, this, the, the point of what I'm saying here is that there's going to be a lot of methods in the particle system class, and those methods deal with all of the particles. 
The methods in the particle class deal with an individual particle, and that's kind of the organizational principle we're going to go through here so that we can have a singular particle system in our main program. So I, I don't, there's not enough room with this whiteboard here to try to like mark it all up out here. I think hopefully this kind of diagrams it out for you, and we can see now, let's try to add these pieces to our program. Let's take everything that we had in setup and draw and put it into the particle system class. Let's try to do that. Okay, so here we are. And let's take a look at this. So first thing I want to do is add a new tab. And I'm going to call it particle system. And I'm going to say class particle system. And I'm going to just put something here for the constructor. And I'm going to say, ah, I think we need an update method. And I think we need a display method. Great. So we're going to update the particle system and display the particle system and create the particle system. So let's go out and look here. Ah, what is the main piece of data for the particle system class? It is the array list. What happens when we create the particle system? We create the array list. What happens when... <laughs> so then we've got this whole big function with all that stuff, you know. It's fine. I like it the way it is. We could have a separate update and display method, and sometimes you might want to do that. But let's actually just make things simpler right now and just make a run method and do this. So now what we've done is we've said, hey, all that stuff we had in the main program, create an array list, run the array list, remove things from the array list, all that is now happening in the particle system class. And we can see here, we can make a particle system object. new particle system. And now when we run this, aha, particles that add new particle. It doesn't know how to add a new particle to the array list particles because that array list particles doesn't exist as the sort of part of the main program anymore. The array list particles is now in the particle system class. So what, what, what does this say to us? Maybe we should add a function called add particle. And what does that mean? That means in the particle system class, we could write a function called add particle, and we could then add a new particle to the array list. So you can see we're managing all the possibilities of the, of the particle system in the particle system class. That's where the array list is. That's where we can add new particles. That's where we can loop through, update, and display, remove, et cetera, particle systems, uh, particle objects, Ugh, particle system, particle. <sighs> I'm acting now like we're not recording anymore because I feel a little winded and tired. So you can see, here we go. We've got it. This is now that example. All we did was take all of that stuff out of the main class and put it into the particle system class. So here's the thing. There's a couple things missing from this. Let's say what we want now, I don't know if I minimize that, is to get back uh, to this particular example. Right? The difference is, here we now have more than one of them. Look, you can see a clue. The main program now has an array list of particle system objects. So obviously this example is there. It's example 4.4 in, in the Nature of Code uh, book, so you can just go look at that example. But if you have the time and wherewithal, what I would suggest to you is try, go look at the simple one, which is uh, 4.3, and which is just a single particle system, and try to make this a list of systems itself. So start with the single particle system and yourself try to make an array list of them. The thing that I just did here that's missing is the particle system is always at this particular location because every particle is, uh, is initialized with this particular location. So one of the things you're going to have to do to these examples to make them more flexible is the particle system probably needs a variable to keep track of its sort of origin location. Where is it giving birth to all these particles? So that might be something that you add here in the particle system class, p vector. I, I think in my examples I called it origin. So maybe the particle system should have an origin variable to it, although it doesn't necessarily need that. In other examples, oy vey, can I just like cut this video off at a certain point? Um, all right, anyway, so that's the end. So take, a, take this as an exercise. What we're going to do in the sort of last, there's a couple things we need to do still. We need to look at, hey, we learned all this stuff about forces and objects experiencing forces in the world. We don't have any of that here. So I want to add that back into these particle system examples, as well as look at this idea of inheritance and polymorphism, which is a way of having a system have different kinds of particles within the same system. Maybe they look different, act slightly different. How do we manage um, 
objects that are related, that are they're kind of all particles with some similar functionality, but they also do different things. Okay, this is going to end this one now. It's very hot under these lights, and everything's going to be fine. You're going to be fine, I'm going to be fine, and I'm going to press the button now. Okay, goodbye.